Wow, that's bright. I can't see shit. Good morning and welcome to today's video. We are gonna be making pinch pots. A pinch pot is a really lovely and versatile style of pot. It's a really beautiful way to acquaint yourself with the clay and understand how it moves and what your touch can do. It's a really nice starting point for many other projects as well. My name is Lily. I am a potter based in London and I am also the author of this book, Hand Built, A Modern Potter's Guide to Hand Building with Clay. We're going to start with uh, a little bit of clay. Let's measure this actually. That's 200 on the money. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. 200 grams. Right, we're going to start with 200 grams of clay, as I said. And that's kind of the amount that you can fit into your palm and um, just by putting your other palm over top. I have wedged this up and I also have a tiny little bit of clay left over. It's sort of a pinch piece there. And we're going to use that later to put a foot ring on. You need a wooden knife tool, a pin tool, and you need a rib of some type. So I've got a rubber rib and I've got a metal rib here. You can use something like a bank card or an old library card, something like that. I also have this guy, a tool for putting in some texture. This is specifically for that, but you can use a loop tool or you can use the sharp part of this or whatever if you wanted to add texture as well. I also have some water and a sponge there. So we're gonna start by batting your clay into a kind of spherical shape. And then once we have that, you're gonna put your thumb through the, I was about to say the bottom of the clay. Uh, there's no bottom, it's a sphere. Through the clay at some point, um, and you're gonna make a little clay mushroom. So I'm gonna use my left hand, it's my dominant hand. I'm just gonna press that in there. And there's probably like that much space in between my base of my clay and my forefinger here. And I've got like a little clay mushroom on my thumb. <laughs> and from there, we're just gonna start pinching. So I'm gonna be using this pincer type motion like that with my left hand because it's my dominant hand and with my other hand I'm going to just slowly twist the clay around so that I can pinch the clay evenly all throughout the walls. So we're going from this part where you had your clay mushroom all the way up to the rim and as you pinch around you will um, notice that there's thicker spots and there's thinner spots and you just kind of try and evenly pinch until you've got to the rim. So I'm kind of angling my hand. It's quite hard to show when I'm doing, when I'm actually pinching, but I'm angling it at this kind of imaginary spot at the top of a cone. And that is gonna keep your pinch cup as a cup. If you wanted to have a bowl, then you would kind of angle your hand outwards and the pot would go out. But I see a lot of people have trouble with um, the way that the pot go, like doesn't flare the right way. So that's a bit of a trick. So my hand is angled as if I'm trying to make an enclosed form. It's going nice and slowly, just pinch, pinch, pinching. This one has actually gone quite wide, so there you go, the clay sometimes just does what it wants. <laughs> so I'm just kind of smearing, if you can see any of these like little finger nail marks on the inside, I'm just kind of smearing that with my thumb to get rid of them. And you can see that the clay has grown heaps. It's gone from a ball into a little cup. So you could stop there if you wanted to. I'm gonna keep it going. So I'm gonna keep kind of moving it around and I'm just gonna pinch that rim so that it's nice and even. I'm just gonna feel around my pot and see if I can find any spots that are too thick or too thin. And I'm gonna sort of just lightly pinch the spots that are a bit thicker and try and get it nice and even. Once I am happy with my shape, I'm just gonna gently like boop it on the table here and that's gonna create a flat base for me. That's kind of it. You can stop there or you can kind of keep it going a wee bit. You can keep pinching and so the rim is nice and thin. If you have a really uneven rim, then you can take your pin tool and you can just kind of cut the rim off like this. I'll just do it for here to show you. And that's kind of created like a, a little bit more of an even rim. And you can see that I did that with this one because it's a little bit more sharp here compared to with this one where it's a bit more rounded, a bit more soft. So it kind of depends like what finish you want to kind of how you would treat your rim. I do want that softer rim for this one. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to pinch it. But if you didn't want that, if you want that nice sharp rim, then you would emphasize that by pressing into it. 
I'm going to pinch that away because I don't want that. Then we're going to turn it over and we're going to add the foot ring. So I've got this clay here. I am just going to kind of roll it into like a little bit of a clay caterpillar. And then we're going to roll it with our whole kind of palms and fingers from one end to another and that is going to stretch the clay out. So for this one I want a slightly longer foot ring so I'm just going to gently press down on this wee coil to flatten it out a little bit. And then we'll see what it looks like on the pot. I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to mark with my fingernail where those um, tails meet and I'm just going to poke it there, take it off and I'm going to cut that tail off. And I'll cut this one off too. And I'm just going to smush these together. I would usually say um, score and slip to make sure the join is nice and tight but for this um, the clay is really wet so I'm not worried about that. If your clay is a little bit drier then maybe do, do a little slip and score situation. Now we're going to attach it. So I'm just going to place it on where I would like it to be and I'm going to take my needle tool but you can take whatever tool you've got, your knife tool or your fingernail or something and I'm just going to mark where it's sitting on the base of the pot. And then I'll remove it and I am going to score and slip now. So I will just start scoring on the base of the pot here. And this creates an area for this piece of clay to grab onto. It's like a clay Velcro or something. <laughs> it's important to sort of rough it up, otherwise it, um, yeah, it can just kind of slip off, fall off. And then we're gonna choose the best looking side to be um, the top, the base. And then we're going to, on the other side, do the same thing, score it. Cool. Once we have um, both areas scored, we can, you can use a bit of slip if you have some. So that's just clay, the same clay mixed with some water and it's like a nice thick consistency. But I'm just going to use a little bit of water. So I'm just going to dip my finger in the water and I'm going to smear it on this foot ring. And that's going to be enough. A little bit of water really does go a long way um, with wet clay. So I'm going to place it down, wobble it into place, just to get it to nicely adhere. And then you can go around with your thumb, like the back of your thumb, press that in. I quite like to do that with a clean knife tool. I'm going to bring the clay from the edge of the foot ring down into the body of the pot. It's going to create a really nicely um, adhered join. And I'm going to just kind of draw around the inside of this with my sharper bit of my knife tool. And that is going to kind of do the same thing on the inside. This clay is still quite wet and squishy, so you can see that it's not really holding its shape yet. So you can kind of finish it off at this point. So you can um, keep playing um, like with your knife tool or your one of your rib tools, whatever, um, and kind of start shaping it a little bit but I prefer it to be a little bit more leather hard so I'm just going to pinch this out a wee bit to shape it and then I'm going to leave it for a little bit to get to leather hard. This is where we're at. Um, it's a little bit squishy still so let's leave it for half an hour, an hour or so and um, we'll be ready for the next steps. Okay, we're back. So you can see it is much harder now. It's not kind of, it's a little bit like falling under its own weight, but it's definitely a lot more solid, a lot less squishy. So we can um, go through and like tidy it up essentially. So you can use your wooden knife tool again and you can just kind of like refine that foot ring a little bit. Or you can have a play with the ribs. So this is the metal rib and you can kind of like drag the clay and you can get rid of all your fingerprints. Um, so you can see the difference there between where I have done it and where I haven't. Or you could use your um, rubber kidney and do the same thing that's a lot more soft. You can kind of just do whatever you want with it here. So this is sort of it, like you could stop now. 
Um, I always like to just finish off the rims a wee bit. And maybe I will get rid of some of these like harsher bits of clay here. I quite like with a pinch pot um, and with like pretty much any hand building to leave some of the history of how you made it because it was made with your hands, you know. It is kind of nice to have little fingerprints or like marks where you pinched it or whatever. You don't necessarily want it to be perfect, perfect. You know, if you wanted something perfect, you could go to a shop and buy something that like a machine made. But we're not machines, you know, we're people. We be squeezing this clay and leaving little marks and it's quite nice. I'm just gonna go in around the foot ring and clean that up as well. Just a little bit, just to kind of refine it and keep it nice and neat. And maybe on the inside as well, just get rid of some of those little clay crumbs. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is just go over with a sponge and kind of get rid of any of these um, harsher lines that have been left by the rib. So I wring my sponge out pretty well so it's just damp. I'm just going to run that over and see how much it softens everything. Mm, lovely. I love making pinch pots. It's so therapeutic. And it's sort of like, if you don't really know what to make, it's nice to have a little pinch and a little play and it kind of gets you started with the day. You know, it's like a little warm up exercise. Um, I had a friend who made a whole lot of pinch pots as little wine goblets for her 30th birthday party. And they were so cool. They were so effective. Um, and that's kind of what inspired me to make these in the book. Um, just, I remember the look of them, they were so, so sweet. And let's just clean up the rim as well and then we're kind of done. So adding texture if you wanted to. Um, obviously I've left this one quite bare, it's quite plain. Um, and then maybe I'll decorate it with some glaze or um, just kind of keep it as is. But I have this other one here which I had to play with um, this tool. And I, you can sort of like carve into it. This is leather hard as well. And then just clean up those marks again with the sponge. Just to soften everything. So there we go, a couple of pinch pots. If you want to follow the step-by-step -step instructions and get loads more inspiration and information about hand building, then you can get my book Hand Built wherever you get uh, good books. It also is available in a couple of different languages. So we've got um, French, German, Dutch, and Danish. I am back every week with another video in the studio, whether it is part of the hand building series or if it is something else in the studio, maybe a bit of um, studio maintenance or a bit of throwing, a tutorial, a vlog, whatever it is, I'm here every week. You can also follow me on social media. I'm at may.ceramics and I will see you again soon for another video. Bye.